day. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming and attending the South Island's um, emergency meeting. I am glad that you're all here. Like I said, thank you for coming. Um, I think it's really important for everybody to be here because we're losing our children left and right. I mean, we're really losing our kids. And I think my wake-up call is when I lost a zoo brat last year. He was gunned down. Then, I'm even going to say, I'm a little bit more embarrassed because one of the little boys I potty trained, I taught him how to talk, and I taught him how to walk, is one of the ones that killed Atlas, that cab driver. So it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call. I keep it real with mine. You know, I feel in some way, I believe in holding myself a little bit accountable because And I kind of kept the real, real deep questions for our older panel, for our Dell panel. But I'm gonna go straight into it with our new panel. Um, one thing that's bothering me is the bruh and cuz. Okay? And if you research bruh and cuz in the 60s and 70s, that brought us together. Did anybody know that? The revolutionaries, your Black Panthers, your Black Watchmen, everybody. It brought us together. And it, and it kept us afloat, it, 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 it educated us, you know, and it made us proud of who we was. Oh well, still is. But today, Brother Cuz is actually killing our black children. The Willie Lynch, separation. So I'm gonna start with this youth panel. Can you please break down and explain to us, because some of us really don't know, what is a bruh and a cuz? Who's willing to speak? Um, as far as my understanding, uh, Cuz is a person from the north part of Harrisburg. It's the north side of town. Um, the southern part of Harrisburg is supposed to be here, uh, the Bruh. Um, he just said it's all me because I say Cuz, I'm from uptown, but the thing about it is I don't see anybody differently because for real, for us, Harrisburg, we're all family. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's the funny part about it. Everybody's killing each other, but they act like they're hard. They act like they don't care, but you know, they go home and still think about it. It's still in your mind. You just kill somebody. Most likely, it's your family. You know what I mean? Because you know, your mom or your dad can be going to that funeral. Like, yo, you just really killed that person's son or daughter. So I just want to say that it's really not mainly about the brother and cousin. Those are only for the stupid people, bro. Because I have family on the hill that say, bro, I don't go up to their house and kill them. So. Um, to me, bro and cuz is basically like saying, all right, so this is my territory, and that's your territory. You come towards my territory, I'm basically gonna hurt you. And that's what most people are doing nowadays, days. So therefore, Kids are just going around and just basically killing each other just for territory that really didn't, like, you know, belong to them. So that's what I really have to do. Now, tell them, we're from North Philly. We policed our own neighborhood. So you didn't have to snitch because somebody in your neighborhood was the one that held you accountable. Held you accountable. So, why we cannot snitch? What is so hard about that? Anybody? And I'm going to ask you all to ask some questions too. I think it's important. People consider snitching as being a punk, basically. So like, you basically go to your parents and then you tell somebody, and then your parents tell somebody, and then guess what? You're like, you're already about to fight somebody. So like, Everybody's looking at you was like, oh, so you're a punk, now you gotta see me. And nobody, like, not a lot of kids know how to fight these days. So therefore, they run up to guns, and then they bring them, and then we start losing more kids. And it's all because people say snitching is for punks, and get stitches and everything, so, you know. I think it's a far speech, but what was the question? 
about the snitching? Why don't people snitch? Why don't people snitch? All right. Well, um, as y'all know, we all come from different places, different areas. So everybody got a different way of viewing things. I come from the South Bronx, so our way of viewing snitching is completely different. The way I was raised up about snitching is snitching is kind of like if you have a family issue, right? You have something that went on your family. You don't go out to like everybody in the street, you know what I mean, telling y'all business so that they can look at y'all different. So the thing about snitching is if you're somebody from your family did something, you keep it in between y'all so that y'all know. But if something else happened out the other way, you do anything you can to find out what happened to the people that you love. You know what I mean? So that's the difference about um, about snitching. It's not necessary that you can't snitch and that you're not allowed to snitch. It's just that you don't put your information out there if it don't need to be put out. Now if it's something serious, then you put your information out there. You let people know who you need to go to to find out who did what so that you can get this squashed, get it done with, and get straight to the point. So that's our view of snitching, why you shouldn't and shouldn't snitch. But that's just us. Um, the thing about snitching, a lot of people don't want that label. Um, they think, you know, I'm known as a snitch, ain't nobody gonna do nothing around me. Ain't nobody gonna ever wanna do nothing. And then, like, if you snitch, then you gotta look over your neck and everywhere. Like, he might hurt me. Like, now that I told, now they might be after me. My, I might die. That's how they think. Like, maybe if I come outside, I get shot because I told. I mean, might have, like, had I shut my mouth, this would never been happening. Now, my family, they, they think it might hurt their family. So, thinking you can keep your mouth shut, nothing bad happened to your family or you. <laughs> um, something that Jamil has said was about the rap music. Um, because for anybody, know, I'm a hip hop activist. I am hip hop since 1982. Started out as a rap writer, and I was a B girl, and I was a rapper. And that was my partner sitting in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> but I noticed that they said that, you know, hip hop is what's the cause to our to our children. This is what caused our children to act like a fool. That's what they said. That's what they say. But one thing which was crazy, they don't talk about the call of duty, black ops, the grand theft auto. They don't talk about what is it? Cause you can't bring a gun out of your arm like that. Well, okay. <laughs> but, but you know what? It's controlling that mind. It's controlling that mind. And for some people that's not intelligent, some people that's not researching, some people who don't have that third eye, they're gonna go out there and think that black ops is real and think they can shoot them down and that character can come back up. They can get it. Okay, okay. Alright, the whole hip hop is doing everything. I, I, I have a different view on that because I listen to hip hop, but the hip hop that I listen to, it means something to me. It's not no Waka Flocka, it's not no Gucci Man, not Little Wayne. I listen to Lupe Fiasco, Kid Cudi, Kanye West, you know, people that felt pain. And they felt pain that I felt before. I mean, my, my dad was never there. My mom, she's struggling. I had to take care of my sisters by myself sometimes. So, like, the way I see it is there's a difference between hip-hop and rap. There's a difference between the music from, like, the early 90s and, like, 2004. Early 90s was more Tupac and Biggie. 2004 was more snap with it. I want to make a comment. As far as the uh, Grand Theft Auto goes, um, uh, when we start talking about these issues, we have to talk about psychology. Right. Uh, and when you talk about psychology, Grand Theft Auto, I mean, you, you, you see people dying all the time. Like, you know, video games, it's not a matter of, like, in, in the video game, somebody pull out a gun, so I think somebody pull out a gun from their arm, so I think I can do that in real life. It's a matter of, like, they're simulated death, and it's getting more realistic, and they're replaying these images over and over and over and over and over. And, over. and it's desensitized. And that's what the issue is. That's what the issue is with the video game. It's not that, it's not so much that somebody, that, that somebody thinks, oh, I might shoot somebody and they'll be able to get back up. Maybe a little bit, but it's the fact of the matter is that they become so desensitized to it that they don't even care that much. Right. That's that's an issue. It's not just a video game, it's a TV, it's a lot of stuff. But that's a big, that's a big, that's, it's real serious. Well, 
Go ahead, babe. The, the Grand Theft Auto thing, my son is five. He went over to my neighbor's house. He played the Grand Theft Auto with the neighbor's daughter. He was hyped when he got home. He was like, oh, mom, I killed Granny. Granny was running down the street, got caught up in a bank robbery or something, and I killed her. He was so hyped. Can I go over there tomorrow and play? Like, he was excited, like adrenaline rushing at five, like excited because he didn't shot a Granny. And I'm like, oh, no, uh, and I ain't even buy that game, so I, you ain't going to play that no more. But to piggyback off of what he said about um, about how you raise your kids and um, it piggybacks, yeah, you can raise your kids and you can give them the best tools ever, but your kids can still go out and get caught up in the nightlife and shoot somebody. That shouldn't reflect how your parents raised you at the end of the day because some of the parents raised their kids well, right. teach them the right paths, do whatever they need to do, but at the end of the day, them kids is gonna make the decisions they wanna make at the end of the night. Period, point blank, bottom line. And I don't want to be looked at and judged like, oh, she's a bad mom. She's in the media for this and that. But then her son then robbed the corner store. No, because in my house, I get spanking. So I would tore his butt up like my mom and dad did. But at the end of the day, that don't make my mom and dad any less of a parent because my sister was a gambler. She gambled, she gambled the groceries if she could, but that didn't make my mom and dad who worked the normal nine to five and been married over 30 years, less of parents. Mm. So sometimes it's not the parents, sometimes it's the friends, it's the community, sometimes it's whatever they caught up in, but you know, parents do play a role. Amen. Now, uh, as far as like, Young generation saying they, they, they don't get caught up with these games and stuff like that. I don't buy it. I'm going to tell you now because I've sat down and played Modern Warfare, Grand Theft Auto, and got his hype. Played Modern Warfare and wanted to join the army because of how. My own warfare three, and I want to go through what they just did because of that psych, like you just said, it's a, psych a, a psychological thing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of y'all kids can't control that. I'm a to tell you man, and I'm sitting here telling y'all the same thing. A lot of y'all kids can't control what y'all hearing and how y'all how, how, how acting on it because it's brainwashing. It's already brainwashing. You can say, yeah, you listen to Lupe, but you're going, you're going to be outside and somebody will ride past you. And play walk the flock, and I guarantee you, you gonna walk the flock the song. And you want something, you gonna jam to it because it's already stuck in your head, been brainwashed. You. So whatever you act, were acting to is gonna happen because it's already still in your head. You know what's funny? Because I, I was at a meeting after Van Bottom had spoke. Um, they can play the wackest song on the radio, the wackest song on the radio. Every they said they played that wackest song every 19 minutes in rotation. But guess what? If they start at 7 o'clock a.m. and you have tuned in to 99 point something, guarantee by 5 o'clock that's going to be your thing. Yep. Because it's my truck. Yep. And that was their goal for you, for you to do that. Yep. It could be the wackest song in the world. But that's what. Second time you listen to it, it's all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. heard it about third time, it's just doing it. You know, you're in the back. Okay. Um, just to piggyback on everything, um, I can testify. I don't listen to Boozy. Yo, don't say it. I'm going to say but it. <laughs> I caught myself listening to Boozy because I had heard one song and I was like, he said something. Man, I got the wrong boozy dosage, and before I know it, I was ready to let off on somebody. <laughs> and this was after like three songs, so it's like, and I have enough sense of myself, I'm a grown man, but like, you as young men, young women, you gotta understand that you're still developing. So, it's like, it's a candy store to you right now. This whole world is a candy store. It's like, I can do that, I can do this. But you gotta govern yourself and say, you know what? I shouldn't do that. Me and my son, we're always talking. He's um, at the age right now where he wants to move out. And I'm like, yo, don't put the cart in front of the horse. What you're rushing to, you're going to get. But use right now to prepare yourself 
prepare yourself for when that time comes. Mm -hmm. Nobody's trying to hold you back. Nobody's trying to hold none of y'all back. But use this time, use, use these forums, use these eyes. Where are your resources? You see any of these people on the street, just like we're here now, we're here for y'all forever. children kids because I believe kids are goats, they're billy goats and billy goats are mischief makers, they're always in something in their heart and they don't listen. Mm -hmm. So I never call a child a, a kid. You know, I don't even talk that kind of language. Mm -hmm. And um, another thing that I wanted to say is like I don't know too much about the video games and things like that because I encourage my children to read, to read, mm -hmm. read and try yeah. to understand yeah. what is being reiterated yeah. with your life so that you can understand like Sport and play is what's killing us. It's, yeah. the, it's the games and playing around and not thinking that anything about life is serious. Mm -hmm. Everything is play. Play with someone's life, play with someone's mother, play mm -hmm. with someone's father. Mm -hmm. Play with the words that come out of your mouth. I teach my children, think five times before you speak. And you may be right, not saying that you're going to be, but you may be. Sometimes you just need to slow down a little bit and think about what it is that we're doing because we are responsible for our own self. Mm -hmm. Even when you're just a small baby, one or two years old, if the stove is hot, we learn that it's hot very early. Yeah. Everything that we need is already in us. It's innate and it's embedded into us. But it's covered up by a little way and maybe some of these other things that you see in here. And young man, you said something that was real interesting when you was talking about the, the rap back in the day rap. When they used to sit, when MC Light Art and Eric B and Rakim used to rap, they always was talking about, leave the guns and the knives and the crack of them. They don't be like on the microphone. <laughs> Us loving one another, us caring about each other. You, how can you say you love God whom you've never seen and hate your brothers and sisters who you see every day? You have to be careful. Uh, I'm in the hip hop, you know, it has changed a lot. I like older rap more than the new rap, you know. I may talk about certain things like the like the new rap, but I'm still educated like the old. I can still say something in a rhyme and it's still have you like, okay, maybe he is on the right path. You know. But I don't fall on the rap. You know, I want to be a firefighter or a carpenter. So that way I can have more money. So that's so go ahead. What? No, I'm done. I was saying like Parents, we need to stop limiting our kids and what they, like you just said, you want to be a fireman and a carpenter. That's, that's the thing. Our generation think they can be basketball players, cops, mm. doctors. Oh, it's all about a person that made a, a label on a chip. You ever think about that? Yeah. You ever sit back and think about who, who sits there all day and actually sit there and make a label on a chip? Mm -hmm. like, like people, like we, we really limit our kids to the stuff that's in our community. And that's why these kids are acting out there when they don't know it's other things out there. They really don't. We, we gotta really get moving because we, we gotta get the adult, you know. Let me ask y'all a question that's you. What goes on in your community? What goes on in your school? What you see, what you hear. How can y'all hold each other accountable? <coughs> what is what is the solution to the problem? Is there a solution? I mean, for holding each other accountable, as most of y'all can see, kids, when we talk to each other, we understand each other a little bit better than y'all, like, you know what I mean, than we understand y'all. Some people, it's just because the way we come off, and sometimes it's because we just used to each other. So it's like, you know what I mean, our own little bondage. And, I mean, for some people it's surprising, and some people don't care, but it's amazing to me to see how some of us at our age influence people that are younger than us. I see little kids who's been really hyped and will listen to half of us. If we tell them to do certain, you know what I mean, do certain things the right way, and it's amazing how they do it. It's sometimes better than what you expect it to. So it all depends, and the thing that is different about kids is we don't have that mindset is that, oh, so we're older, you know what I mean? You got, you know what I mean? We're older than you, so we know what's going on, so you gotta listen to us, you know what I mean? The way, we said, the way we put it out there to the kids is, you know, we just like you. We're not going to put ourselves higher, we're not going to put ourselves lower. 
So if y'all exactly the same way as us, if we can give you this information, you can take that and you can make it better. You know what I mean? It won't make you better than the person, but it'll give it'll make you better. So that's also how it goes about. That's why some kids, when we go outside and be like, yo, did you just do that? Or a little kid took somebody's ball and be like, yo, why you take his ball? Go we'll give it back. And they go give it back because it's not that we saying that we're better than them, it's that we're showing them that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. And that's where some things that adults don't go by. It's always that, because I've had this speech a couple of times, is that, you know what I mean? I'm older than you, I'm more wiser, I know everything that's right, and some teachers do it too. And you know what I mean? So they'd be like, okay, well you gotta listen to that. And some people's like, well, you're like, you're just like me. If you're gonna talk to me, try to put yourself, not at my level necessarily, like dropping your knowledge, but put yourself so that I can understand you. So I don't feel like you're just complaining to me, and then, you know what I mean? Yeah, talking to me, and I'm supposed to do what you say because you said it. I'm not gonna do it that way because most of us are hard headed. But if you put it to the way that we can understand you and, and vibe with you, you know, we'll put it to action faster than what you expect us to. So it all depends on your mindset, how you approach somebody, how you speak to somebody. So that's how I see that we can influence everybody else.